There have been many different versions of Windows. Where we're going to focus our efforts today are on the ones that are on the CompTIA A Plus certification. Windows 2000 is certainly one of those. There were a few different flavors of Windows 2000. A Windows 2000 Professional, that's the one you most often see on people's desktops. Windows 2000 Server, Advanced Server, and Data Center Server were versions of Windows 2000 that were specifically built for use in large computing environments, data centers, putting on a web server, being able to run a database server from it. These days, a very common operating system on desktops and in enterprise environments is Windows XP. XP Professional, XP Home, XP Media Center, and XP 64-bit are four kinds that we're going to address in our training today. And we're going to talk more about what those different flavors are and the differences between them. And something that's new in the CompTIA A Plus certification is an understanding of Windows Vista. The different flavors of Vista we're going to be interested in is Vista Home Basic, Vista Home Premium, Vista Business, and Vista Ultimate. Even though there's one operating system, Windows XP and Vista and 2000, notice there are different flavors of that operating system depending on what you'd like to do. There are other Windows versions that we will not be talking about as part of the certification. Windows 7, for instance, is a, a relatively new operating system on the market, and it is not part of the CompTIA a requirements, at least not yet. Windows Server 2003 and Windows Server 2008 are, are a little bit outside the scope for the CompTIA certification, which really focuses more on desktops and managing those desktops. Windows Server 2003 and 2008, like the name implies, was built just for server environments. And lastly, there are many other Windows versions, Windows Mobile, tablet PCs, that are really different flavors of XP and Vista and Windows 7. We won't be talking about any of those in our CompTIA a certification training videos. And they are not part of the a requirements, but they're still out there. You'll occasionally run into those operating systems. Don't be surprised if you see Windows in some very unusual places or places you weren't expecting to see it. Because Windows really is a, an operating system that's very pervasive. You'll see it everywhere. It's just that we're going to focus our efforts on Windows 2000, Windows XP, and Windows Vista. I mentioned earlier about these different flavors of operating systems. We saw there's a Windows XP 64-bit. There are 64-bit versions of, of Vista. There are 64-bit versions of the Windows Server products. And you're going to find that occasionally when you're buying a new computer, you may get a choice. Do you want the 32-bit version of the operating system or the 64-bit version of the operating system? Well, there are a couple of significant differences between those two. Uh, first, you need to keep in mind that a 32-bit version of the operating system will run on a 32-bit processor. A 64-bit version of an operating system will run on a 64-bit processor. You can also run a 32-bit version of the operating system on a 64-bit processor and not vice versa. Generally, you don't really run a 32-bit operating system on a 64-bit processor because that means you're not really taking advantage of that very fast and, and much more advanced operating or much more advanced piece of hardware. Why would you buy a 64-bit processor in your machine and not run a 64-bit operating system, although there are times when that might make sense. Whenever you start installing these things, you'll notice that the hardware drivers is really your determining factor. In a 64-bit operating system, you must have drivers to the hardware that are 64-bit drivers. If you're running a 32-bit operating system, you must have device drivers that are 32-bit versions. That is very specific. That's a, a very, very important piece to think about. If you're going to buy a, a piece of hardware, you're going to buy a laptop, you're going to buy a computer, and you're going to buy a 64-bit operating system to go on it, make sure that every single piece of hardware you have has a 64-bit device driver available for it. Not all hardware has that. It's pretty important. You'll also see abbreviations for this. A 32-bit operating system might be abbreviated as x86, which goes back to some of the older chip names that Intel used very early on for their 32-bit processors, a 286 and a 386, for instance. 64-bit processors are abbreviated with x64. You'll see that very often. And it's kind of unusual. Why isn't the 32-bit x32? Well, because we don't make anything easy in technology, do we? It's just the way we've kind of used the terms throughout the years. And now they've really blended together. No rhyme or reason there, and sometimes that's just the way it is. There's also something within Windows called a Windows compatibility mode. So if you're running a, either a 32-bit or 64-bit version of the operating system, but you may be running Windows Vista, and you're trying to run a program that was made and designed to run in Windows XP or Windows 2000. 
and your operating system isn't running it quite right, you can tell Windows to run this program in a compatibility mode that makes the Windows application think that it's running in Windows 2000. It makes it think that it's running in Windows 98 or Windows 95. It's not something you always have to do. It's very rare that you would have an operating system change, a compatibility mode change to the operating system. Usually it's older programs. They were specifically written, and there's something very unique to those programs that, that only makes it run in those older operating systems. And that's the case. You may be able to run it in a new operating system just by fooling it with that Windows compatibility mode. Windows Vista, as I mentioned, is something new in this latest version of the CompTIA A Plus requirements. Let's look at the different flavors. There's a Windows Vista Home Basic. If you were going to get the most fundamental version of Windows Vista, uh, this is the version that you would get. There's no fancy graphics in it, no Windows Aero desktop. It's just not available in that version. There's also no way to schedule backups in Home Basic. It's really designed just for an extremely basic use of the operating system. When people buy a computer, most often they're getting something like Windows Vista Home Premium if it's a computer for the home because it gives you the ability to have that Aero desktop. There is a scheduled backup function so you can store data files on there, but it doesn't have some of the things that you very often often see in an enterprise environment. There's no remote desktop built in. There's no encrypting file system. There's no way to get on a Windows domain and have group policies assigned to the machine. And why should it? It's, it's at home. It's a machine that's not in the enterprise. So some of those enterprise features and capabilities just simply aren't available in Vista Home Premium. And that means that Microsoft can charge you a little bit less because you will never call Microsoft for support with group policies. You will never call Microsoft support with a problem with your encrypting file system. So that's the balance they make uh, when they're putting together these operating systems is what makes sense for how you're going to use that OS. If you're in a business, you do need the encryption. You do need a way to be in a Windows domain. And Windows Vista Business does that for you. You can have a very complete and comprehensive PC backup and restore program. There's a Windows fax and scan capability that's built into this. There's the ability to do remote desktop. It is a full-blown Windows business Vista operating system. And so you can do a lot with that. There's a lot more business type functions there. There's an uh, an ultimate version of Windows Vista that is called Windows Vista Ultimate that has all of those things in there, but it also includes an extra capability called BitLocker, which allows you to do a full disk encryption. This is very often used for USB keys because those are so portable, you could lose the USB drive, and then whoever found that USB drive would have access to everything on there unless you were using BitLocker. You can plug in your USB drive and tell Windows Vista Ultimate, always encrypt this entire drive. And if anybody was to plug it in, they may be able to erase everything on it and use it as if it was brand new, but they would not have access now to any of your encrypted and very private data that's on that portable drive.